on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% L.A. Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, L.A. Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Thursday, April 6th. LA Galaxy getting ready and actually traveling already to Houston to take on the Houston Dynamo coming up on Saturday. We're going to get you ready for that game. Uh, that game. Chicharito in tow. Uh, Juliana Auda uh, possibly joining up with the team in Houston as well. Uh, we're going to talk about what Greg Vanny said at training. We're going to talk about Dayon Jovalich, Gaston Brugman, probably some Ricky Puj. The supporters had a meeting supposedly tonight. Don't know if it's over. Don't know if it started. Don't know any of that. But we're going to touch a little bit on what that is happening on with the uh, front office there. Uh, and then, like I said, the game. So lots of stuff to get to, lots of things to talk about. Glad to have my partner in crime uh, back with me once again, Mr. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira. Eric, how's it going, buddy? It's going well. How are you? We got to see you this weekend. I got a train ride. Can, can got I to be in Southern California? So everything is all good right now, except for the Galaxy results. Yeah, I mean, you know, I eventually they're going to. I I am fairly certain they're going to win a game this year. I am fairly yeah, certain that's going to happen. I, I don't mean, know. they're not on trend. They're not on trend to win a game. I saw. I saw. Um. Uh. I saw somebody responding to something the LA Galaxy tweeted, and they're like, "Do you plan on winning a game this year? Just, <laughs> just let me yeah, know. Would that be okay. <laughs> it's funny the local uh indoor soccer team around here the, the dallas sidekicks uh-huh. i think they went about like 12 games without winning a game right and that was usually the first comment on their instagram post was do you guys plan on winning this <laughs> one so who, hopefully we don't going to stretch a 12 but yeah, yeah. but i, I want to shout out to you for the hospitality and the train ride the goat hill junction am i saying this right the yes. goat hill junction uh-huh. You know, train track. So the, my, my son had a blast. My mom, I think, had more of a blast yeah, than my son. Yeah, your mom can come back out anytime she wants. She was like <laughs> my biggest cheerleader. Asking me yeah. questions. She was, she was just, asking all the right questions. She was thrilled with the whole experience. So, uh, yeah. so no, that there was a lot of fun. Yeah, there was a point in the tour where my son actually said, can she stop asking questions so we can go, yeah. so we can move? So that's yeah. why I know yeah. she was having a good time. So, yeah, WrestleMania was good. Good. You know, I, I, there was no complaints for this weekend except for that one little tiny thing that we're here to talk about. Yeah. I mean, you know, it it was fun. Can I say we see each other on a regular basis? Like we talk all the time. So I see you, you showing up and somebody who I haven't seen in person in how many months, months. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Almost a year, really. Okay. So did not even occur to me that we hadn't seen each other in person (laughs) Until after you left, I was like, "Yeah, oh my, there's no wait. big deal." I was like, oh, I I was, I was like yeah. "Hey, dude, how's it going?" I was like, oh, it's good. It's so like, yeah, we talk all the time. So, um, this yeah, is this is how you keep the long distance relationship alive, right? You just yeah, you, it's, it's video chat, it's, it's video text. Chat. You know, you know, we're here to talk you through th- therapy if you need that too. Uh, all right, LA Galaxy. Um, yeah, really, I am. I'm very. I'm going to start this off by saying I'm very, very, very optimistic. I, I I've heard. really, I really enjoyed. The Seattle game and, you know, from somebody who gets to watch it from up on high and see everything and see the movement and see the things that happen. The only thing that was missing were the goals. If the Galaxy play at 80% of what they did, they will blow Houston out of the water, right? So 
I'm looking at that and I'm saying this is really important. This is an important game for that reason that this is the first game in a little while where you're like the galaxy are playing well enough. They should be able to beat this team. But then I fall back into this. What happens if they don't beat this team? Yeah. Uh, because yeah. they're on the road and that's not anytime you go on the road in MLS. And we say it all the time. does not. That doesn't mean you're going to win. So that's that's sort of where I start today in, in that vein and that in that mind frame. Yeah, this is the the second week in a row where I haven't watched the game live, and so I've had to go back and rewatch it. So again, seeing the results, seeing a, a you know first half where Seattle went up two two zero in kind of quick since succession, I thought, well, there's Seattle. They were coming in hot. They beat up the Galaxy, and then upon the rewatch, again, second time this has happened, I went, wait, the Galaxy didn't get beat up here. You know, the, the Seattle really got. They had one good opportunity, a little bit of a defensive breakdown, and then kind of a lucky shot from Leo Chu where Klingsman was really you could have done so much better than he did. So a, a bit of a lucky shot there, but again, you you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. You know, yeah. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. Yeah. Um, so so it's just one of those things where I, they they look good. So the, I'm with you, and I love the optimism that the team is playing better. But eventually, I'd rather be lucky than good. You know, I, I mean, we had we talked about that. On last week's show, we said, well, both of these teams like to possess. Which one of them is going to kind of defer to the other team's style? And we saw that the Galaxy was were the ones that possessed, and Seattle is the one who did the smash and grab. So I don't know if the Galaxy maybe need to you know, try something different or just keep doing what they're doing, and eventually it's going to click. Because the, eventually you need to start collecting points. Like we said, eventually you need to win a game. So I, it just I, – I don't want to f- keep falling into that thing put my, put all my energy into 2024. I don't I don't want to do that. I want to, you know, start putting some wins together and against Houston, the team, you see where they land on the table, you kind of see where this is. This is a team that's within reach. You feel like, okay, these are the teams you're supposed to beat even though it is on the road, even though weather might be a factor, but if you play like you've been playing the last two games, eventually those things are start going to start to click and start to go right. We've seen it happen in years past where the Galaxy weren't playing the, that well and then they got kind of the lucky bounces and they walked away with the wins and then later on in the season they went on a lo- losing streak. So maybe this is kind of the inverse of that. They're playing well, they're getting some bad bounces, things aren't quite going their way and then eventually, you know, over the course of, of 34 games, it will make itself right and uh, hopefully they're able to kind of go on a run here. But this is exactly the type of game that they they should get a result from. This is the t- right. you know against this team, and, and you look at you know Chicharito coming back, and that's kind of going to be a welcome a, a welcome addition to the team. I would add, I know he was on Instagram kind of saying his good, goodbyes and doing his things uh, at the airport. So I don't know if he's going to get time with, no. with Edwards. He's, he's, being he's not, he's he's not, not. going to be get. No. And, and, and Greg, <laughs> Greg talked about him today, basically said, I want him to meet us in Houston because I think that's probably an easy place to meet. First of all, because he's coming from from the south. Right. So uh, a, a Houston for style. Too, yeah. yeah. But he wants him to sort of experience an MLS game, get there, experience the squad, get there. And then that way, whenever they need to put him in against LAFC, he's at least has some basis yeah. for what is possibly going to happen. I think Edwards is going to be fine, too. I, I will say I, I will follow up to say that, you know, a lot of times people watch the sound bites and they get the sound bite of of uh, Greg Vanny and they're like, oh, he's, done. he's just he's just making excuses. By the way, anybody who says excuses in the chat room, you get kicked out automatically. We're, we are we are, only I am allowed to use that word because I use it responsibly. The rest of you throw it around like it's uh, like it's candy on Halloween. OK, <laughs> Um but they say he makes excuses. Greg went on about a four or five minute explanation of all the things that have sort of been happening with the club and and why he thinks maybe things aren't exactly working out. But, you know, he likes this and he likes that. And he went through all of these on field things to say that. And then at the end of that, he goes, and he goes, and you know what? We just haven't been getting any breaks either. He goes, when we're going to start getting those breaks, he goes, things are going to start working your way. And when those things start going your way, that's whenever you really start to pick that, that momentum. And he's like, but you know, as Vanny has pointed out, it's margins, right? Percentages, little tiny things. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's sort of where we, where we sit with that. It's like there's little tiny things that can make a huge difference. Uh, butterfly flaps the swings over Japan and it rains in, uh, in Houston. <laughs> Um, is that so what that means? That's oh, what, yeah. Okay. That's you know, it's these little <laughs> tiny things. Effect. Yeah, the butterfly yeah. effect. You know, all the all these little things have have big um, results or or big things that can happen because of them. So I'm sort I'm with him, and but I mean that's nothing new. I usually I think we think the same because usually I know what he's thinking, and usually when I ask the question, I know what the answer is coming back. So um, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's positive. I think that I think the team is positive too. Yeah, I think it's just unfortunate. I was kind of doing the pose there. I think with the pose that he was doing and the soundbite, it's I, I understand where people were coming from, where he seems frustrated and kind of projecting all these kind of other things 
onto him. So uh, I see where that's coming from. But he did also say, if you listen to the whole clip, he says not to make excuses and not to say like he prefaces by saying, I understand how this is going to come across. Right. Like it's sour grapes. But he has he ha he made valid points. He made valid points in terms of, you know, the handball and what is a handball, what's not a handball. I didn't think he was out of bounds for saying that. I think <laughs> given, you know, the luck or, or bad luck that they've had, I thought he was he was fair in, in his assessment of, of the situation. You can tell he was just starting to get frustrated. And I think if the team gets lucky, he, he's not as worried about those handball calls. But I think with the bounces they're getting with the losing streak, obviously that's frustration mounting. Uh, I'm not a fan of, of you know people coming up and blaming the refs or or the weather. It's like, hey, listen, both teams are officiated by the same ref. You know, the, the ball's round for both teams. The weather's the same on the pitch for both teams. So I'm not a fan when those things do pop up. But I thought this wasn't that. I feel like, you know, there's been enough evidence that he's kind of built a case where, okay, this wasn't one game where we were hard done. This is over the course of a few games. Like, I need to say something. And I, I thought he was having his players back in that situation. So it I was. don't have an issue with it. Yeah. 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 And, and again, it sort of felt that way um, that he was he was he was putting on a little bit of spectacle. He was doing some things because he was trying to, um, you know, he was trying to sort of have the backs of his, uh, of his guys. And I understand that. And I can see how that sort of goes and how that sort of, you know, plays out and all these other things that you can see from this LA galaxy team. I, again, I'm optimistic in, in the way you sort of look at things and the way we sort of want to look at things. Um, and you can see, you know, a hundred percent that, that this team has improved for since day it. Now, you know the the other part about this is that you look at um at at the results and they're not there and that's still i mean that's that's a problem right it's it's like one of those things you look at that we we look at three points through five games and we can say okay there's only a couple times ever in history that they were worse than that 2020 which we throw out uh but 1999 was one of them they had two points through the first five games right so that's bad what happens if they go winless through this one well we can actually show you that as well so let's say they don't get a draw they lose this game they have three points well then they will basically be tied with 1997 when they only had three points through six games right um and i don't know if 1997 that one that those three points came off of one win or uh, yeah. or, or because three shootout wins. Yeah, yeah, we have to look, shoot, yeah look, you have to look, look at, at the, what that was. Got to go to the, the film on that one. The, the other thing that, and again, I apologize. I had a first time we had an intruder. My, it's you okay. know, they have the days off tomorrow, so yep. I needed to come in for the screen time Pasco. We're letting them stay up late tonight. Um, As <laughs> you the, should. The, one, the the other thing that's kind of interesting is whenever you bring up those stats, you say, well, you know, we got to throw out twenty twenty for what it was, and and that's fair because of you know. <laughs> with all the situations that does get an asterisk. But I think the teams who did well during 2020 are not going to have that show show up either. So I think you do understand what it was. And and again, not to make an excuse for it to, to kind of steal some of the vanyisms there, but I understand that wasn't a great season either. And there nope. were a lot of flaws. Other teams played in those games and other teams did well. So since 2020, you do kind of need to loop that in and have that be part of the conversation. So again, this is historic, a historically bad start. And I think, you know, hopefully this, this Houston game is coming just at the right time to get them right back on track. Yeah, I, I will say, and again, I do not feel that this is, you know, people are like, this is 2017 all again. It's so not 2017. Please stop that. 2017. Yeah, there's not a reload. Yeah, 2017 was a, <laughs> was a, a different excuse altogether. Yeah, it <laughs> was a horrible, horrible year. It's not a wooden spoon year. Um, that being said, Chicharito comes back and if he gets injured again and the LA Galaxy can't find offense and they can't do it. Listen, Dayon Jovalich's time is on the clock. Uh, yeah. Greg Vanny is showing right now that if you do not, if you are not successful, right, then you will not get playing time. That has not always been the case, but he did it with Efrain Alvarez. You're seeing it with some other guys. You're seeing it with Dayon Jovalich and, and Preston Judd. Preston Judd shows up. He gets some more playing time. Jalen Neal shows up. Gets more playing time. Guess what? Jalen Neal's a starter right now because he took the, uh, the took the time that he was given and he has done it very well. Now, has he been perfect? Absolutely not. And there's some people, I think, who way overhype his performances. I think he's been outstanding for a young kid. Outstanding. He's made some mistakes. They yeah. usually don't get... He hasn't really been punished too badly for them. But if he cleans those up, you have, you're have you going to have this model kid who's 19, 20 years old who's going to be your starting center back for the next three or four years. Yeah, that was kind of the irony. I've been doing a little thing on, on my Instagram page 
uh, you know, my champion of the week. And I, I'm, I gave him the champion of the week this week because he got the goal. And it wasn't necessarily this performance. Ironically, you know, they've had some clean sheets. It was the game where, you know, they had two goals scored against them is where I give it to the defender. But I thought I gave it to him as like a, a reward over the course of these games that he's been in because he has earned that spot. He's made no. himself a starter and he's taken that spot. And then to get the goal to kind of bring them back in, I thought, he, he needs to be recognized for that. And I think that's why you see the praise that he's getting. And, and you, you're right to point out, is it perfect? No. But uh, is, it, is it very, very promising? Absolutely. And I think that's it's kind of like the anti Dayon, you know, because right. Dayon, there's a lot of people who are giving him a lot of rope. I I've even almost call him like the anti Cabral where, well, he can score goals, you know, and it's like, well, he, he can. But where's the creation? Where's the, you know, diagonal runs? Where's the opening up in space, coming back and helping out? That isn't there. So, you know, it's almost like you wish you could combine the two, you know, the, the runs and the speed of a Cabral, but then the finishing, like the actual, you know, final touch should be the the day on kick. Like if you can put that all together, you'd have a perfect striker. But, you know, unfortunately, that's just not the way that things work. Uh, let's pull this stat up. I'm sure Alex got so much crap on this. Uh, I couldn't believe Alex uh, yeah, put out. People the, get defensive. They oh, they love Dayon. St- they are they are. Bo- yeah. I, there's so there's a point where you can love Dayon and understand that he's probably better off the bench and that he hasn't quite figured out how to be effective over 90 minutes. I mean, even in the Discord we have arguments about Dayon and like people are like, well, he's not finding. Him. He's not in the right place at the right time. What I mean, what is Chicharito's? Number one thing whenever he plays is we're always saying, man, that guy's always in the right place at the right time. It's, it, you know, I don't necessarily love this guy, but Chris Wondolowski, right place, right time. Just yeah. poacher, poacher, poacher. Dayon is a little bit less of a poacher, but still a poacher. He needs to yeah. be in the right place at the right time. He's not on the same page with everybody. Maybe that's a maybe that's a team fault, right? And people love to say that. Maybe it's a team fault. Team's not finding him in the right spots. That's fine. But Preston Judd comes in and all of a sudden they are finding him in the right spots. Um, and that's, there's a difference in how they play. I get that hundred percent. And you have two forwards up there. You know, what does Preston Judd do by himself as a, as a striker? Right. And we got to see some of that against Portland still had some chances, hit the post, did some things. You're like, okay, that's creation there. Yeah. And that's, that's the difference. And I also see the shout of, um, well, where's the people to set him up? You know, where's the supporting cast? To help him out. Well, it's kind if of supporting right cast now. did all the work, yeah. then, you know, you can put anyone at striker and, and, you know, you'd be fine. You know, ask the U.S. men's national team what would happen if you could just put anyone up top. You know, that's obviously not the case. You need someone, you know, with, with chance creation and can take someone one on one and can come back. A critique that I actually have oftentimes of Chicharito is he's dropping back too deep. Right. And he's kind of an, almost working as, as a, a number 10 instead of being that number nine striker. But, you know, we don't see that from day on. He's not coming back and kind of, you know, <laughs> he's not you can't make that critique of him because he's waiting up there for someone to serve him. And unfortunately, the Galaxy just they don't have the horses uh, to put it on a platter for him right now. Yeah, I will say this as well. Um, you know, you can sort of sit there and say that. Uh, Dayon outperformed his expected goals last year by a significant margin. So this could be regression to the mean, right? This could be yeah, coming back. To, yeah, yeah, to everything, zero, yeah, everything's coming back to sort of that that point where it's going to be more in line. And maybe he's underperforming his XG right now. I don't know. I haven't I haven't checked his XG. So that's also something that could be. It could be the evening out of everything that you know is the universe and the calls and all that fun stuff, right? So, um, yeah, it's. It's really interesting to me. I'm just, I'm I'm at the point now where I'm like, all right, Greg, play whoever you think is going to make an impact, right? And if that's day on, then that's day on. Great, that's fine. I have no problems with day on starting. Um, if that's Preston Judd, then start Preston Judd. I it, at this point, what do you have to lose because you're not winning games and you're not scoring goals? Uh, the Galaxy have three goals to their first five games. The interesting thing here. Uh, Alex put it up into a, a stat. Uh, Dayon Jovalich has played uh, 17 games as a starter in his career for the LA Galaxy. The team has two wins, 11 draw, or 11 losses, and four draws. That's a win percentage of 15.3. percent Here's where the, and that's not good, right? That's not good. But <laughs> but you can you can easily exp- explain some of that, which is sometimes yeah. he gets put into games where everybody's missing, right? Like in U.S. Open Cup games or in different yeah. places, right? Where it's not necessarily the same caliber of supporting cast that he had on there. Dayon stood, still did well in the U.S. Open Cups whenever he played most of those yeah. games, even if he didn't score a whole bunch of goals. But you can explain some of that. But people want to pretend like the roster that's out there right now in the last couple games hasn't been good enough to get Dayon Jovalich chances. And I think that's incorrect. 
Um, well, you know, yeah. I, I do say I want to shout out the commercial underground. They said day on finish, difficult chances last season, not very, very many tap ins, which is correct. We're not saying he's he's a tap in no. guy like the, he's he's a good striker of the ball. He knows how to finish. But uh, again, you need to create that to an extent. And I think, you know, it, that's it's just a difficult balance. So I think there, there's some subtle kind of nuances and differences where he, he, he does need the service to an extent. But at the same time, he needs to create those chances and create those shots as well and know where to run and know where to be. Sometimes I think his goals were in spite of being able to make the right run because he's such a good striker with the ball and with the accuracy and ac- uh, accuracy and knowing how to hit it, that that's why he scored as opposed to necessarily being in the right spot or hitting it, you know, uh, you know, perfectly clean. I think that's kind of the little subtle difference of that. Yeah. Um, it's again, it's, 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 and I'm not down on day on Jovalich either. Like it's, it's not like you're sitting there. I, I think people, so they get so embedded in camps that they just, I have to die on the day on Hill or I have to die on the day on shouldn't play anymore. Hill. No, yeah. I think day really good as a substitute and I would like to see him move back into that role, get some confidence. And then once he has some confidence again, you can start him as a starter again. I don't care. Um, really interesting when Greg's talking about a three, five, two, and we talked about this on Monday with Christian miles right now, he almost indicates that. Preston Judd may be a better fit if they're going to play two forwards with Chicharito up there. We won't have that issue probably right out of the box, um, but coming forward and perhaps in the second half of uh, of of the LAFC game, right, where you're going to need two forwards, perhaps that's when when Judd gets the call instead of Dan Jovalich, which will be super interesting, especially for a guy who is an LA LAFC killer uh, whenever he plays. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just interested to see how the whole thing plays out. I, I, I don't have a, a, a dog in this fight. Um, I think it will all work itself out just fine and everybody will be okay. Well, I, I, to, to your point of us, you know, not having a dog in this fight. I, one thing that I will say with Dayon is when Chicharito, you know, was out, I thought, well, this is Dayon's time to shine. He's going to obviously score goals. It's going to happen. So I was hoping for him to be successful. It's not like, well, he could only do it off the bench. He's not going to be able to do it at the starter. I thought it was going to transfer well. I thought he was going to be able to do, do it as a starter, and it just hasn't worked out. Right. So, you know, we'll see if when if a formation changes, something that happens, then we'll see if Judd gets the nod. But the, uh, a thought that I was having, uh, you know, with, without it coming in is, you know, does Edwards get displaced? And I, I'm just having the thought with how much Edwards crashes forward mm. and our lack of wingers. You know, does does Vanny try playing Edwards as, uh, you know, in the midfield? So you have Alda and you have Edwards on the field. Yep. And so you play Edwards like a winger. He's played, you know, as an attacker in the past. So that wouldn't be that crazy. You know, he, we've done it with when Julian Rajo was on the team, pushing him up to the midfield, pushing him forward. So I don't think that's a crazy idea either, that if you do want to start having some fun with the formation and making those changes, uh, you know, I, I think that'd be something that's welcome if they start to get a little stale and it doesn't start firing. Because he, he's right at that point where he's starting to lose – some of the trust uh, of those fans, you know, it's like, well, is Vanny, you know, a system manager, is he being too stubborn and sticking to the system? You know, some good coaches, when they notice that they're something's wrong, you need to make changes, adjust the system, switch the formations, you know, change the tactics. And if he's unwilling to do that over three seasons, then that's, that's starting to get to that point where, okay, if it's stale, if it's not working, we need to start making some changes. So I think we're going to see kind of a do or die moment, uh, you know, obviously six game of the season, not, not a must win situation, but you know, if they start to get desperate, it's like, well, this isn't working. We're, we're playing well, but the, the goals aren't coming. Maybe a formation change is going to be the thing that gets us right. You, you need to make a change because, you know, if it's if it keeps being broken, then you do need to change it. You know, that's yeah. the opposite of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If right. if, it, if it's always showing up broken, eventually you got to put, put new batteries or, you know, shake it, blow right. in the cartridge, do something to get it going. Much like last year, the LA Galaxy will continue to morph into a two forward set whenever they need goals. Right. And unfortunately, sometimes you're like, maybe they should start in that set. Maybe. Maybe that's a, but the galaxy really it's do all situational too. Yeah, they they play really comfortably in a four three three. I, I think the five three two or a, or a four uh, with any sort of like a four five one or anything that sort of you know starts morphing into those, they are less comfortable. So I'm okay with that. But you also have to ima- understand that the LA Galaxy don't have a right winger, so that means that whoever they have a right wing tucks inside, whether it's Efrain Alvarez, whether it's Memo. Uh, Rodriguez, whether it's Douglas Costa. I mean, Costa is the most winger out of any of those guys yeah. that they have. He's and supposed to be the winger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, um, you know, could sort of expect that. I, I think they're going to find goals in this Houston game again. Uh, I think Chicharito is going to come in and play probably the last 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and, you know, I think everything, 
Hopefully at that time, the galaxy aren't behind and they're chasing, but it very yeah. well could. Um, but you have to start moving Chicharito into this and get everybody ready for the LAFC game as well. I just, I really want the LA Galaxy to focus on this Houston game, to pay attention to it, to understand the magnitude of what a win in Houston could do for them in terms of starting to ramp things up, knowing that you have LAFC right after yeah, that. The but following week. you're not allowed to look at that game, <laughs> but you have to win this game knowing what it will do for you for that next game and the next game after that. Because we have talked about this, Eric. The schedule says this is not easy for the LA Galaxy. You have the Houston, which is the easiest game this month, and it's on the road. That's not a great combination. Usually you'd like your easiest game to be at home. Yeah. Um, but it's not. It's on the road, which makes it more difficult. So it's not just the easiest game. Now it's a little more difficult on the road. Um then you have LAFC at home. You have Austin at home. Two very good teams back to back. Those are going to be really fun games to sort of watch, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then you have you know this Orlando game. You have to go all the way to Orlando. That's not an easy game. So this, yeah, whenever yeah, yeah Montreal, Orlando, New York. Whenever the Galaxy are on those road trips, it's always always kind of a pain. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is their chance to sort of do that. I see. Dayon Jovalich is a starter. I see uh, Chicharito coming in and, and getting some game time. Um, all of these things, I think, are working towards the LA Galaxy finally hitting stride um, as, as, as it sort of relates to, to this, the rest of this month. So this game is important. And, you know, it's never you could never. And there have been people. This is a must win game. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it right we now. We were doing that in, in game 30 last season, and it technically wasn't until yeah. game 34. So, yeah, we're definitely not going to do that in game six. Yeah. Um. I am, I am, I, it's, it's not a must win, but it really is helpful. Right. And there's yeah. things you can do to make things like you make your season easier. This is one of them. Win this game. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's almost like a, like a no duh type of thing where you don't want to look ahead to the LAFC game, but when you come off a win and you're riding high and you're feeling good about it, that makes for a much better week in training and in kind of having the, you know, the chemistry in the team that makes it a lot better than we lost again. We still haven't had our first win. And now we have this high pressure situation. Yep. It does. It, it impacts the team, though. And you could say, well, each game's different. We look for a week to week. It's it's behind it. You can say all that publicly. But we know, you know, if you've been in a competitive situation, you know, you need to, to kind of, you know, break your duck. You know, as, as someone, this is our favorite thing where we compare ourselves to professional athletes. Yes. But, you know, as someone who, who played, you know, forward, a little bit of forward, you always want to get your first goal because there's something about, okay, now once I get that out of the way, then I can fresh flow. But when you go a stretch of games without scoring, it's like, man, I haven't scored in a few games. Like, you don't, then it gets real tight. You're, you, you're not playing the right way. So yeah, there, there's that's definitely a thing. So the players are going to say the right things to the press and to the media. But right. internally, they're definitely having those those conversations and a, a win would do them a lot of good. Uh, Cabral's son, one of my favorite uh, accounts in the chat room. It's not a <laughs> must win. It's a, it's, it, it's a please win for my mental health. I, I think that goes for I think fans' mental health and also coaches, players, all their mental health. I think it would a win would do a lot of good. It's okay, we won. You know that's the thing, and it's stupid. They're gonna win games, okay? <laughs> They're gonna win the games. This team is too good, and I know people are like, "It's a winless team." Stop. Just watch the games. It's okay. It's okay to be different. You don't have to be like your friends. Just crapping on a team that hasn't won. You can see that they're they are a good team. Are they a great team? I don't know yet. All right? Are they a top four, top five team in the Western Conference? I don't know yet. All right? I don't even know who the best teams in the Western Conference are right now. It feels yeah, very well, and that's It's interesting that you mentioned, well, Austin's a good team. Austin hasn't been you know, setting the world know, ablaze yep. either. They, they, they've kind of taken a dip from what they were doing last season. Orlando, you know, the, uh, Oscar Perea, they're always well coached and it's cross-country travel. But yeah, I don't know that I'm, I'm like terrified of you no. know, the, the big, bad or, or Orlando City SC. Like, I don't, I don't know that, that they scare me. So, yes, these are difficult games, but also, <laughs> given the parity of the league, I mean, obviously the rivals, they're, how they're playing right now, that's that's when they're 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 hot right now. Just, right. You can't. There's no way about it. You could be a hater all you want. Like that's going to be a tough game. But you know, Austin, Orlando, those are games where if you if you're playing well and you, everything's you, those those could be winnable games. There's no reason why you could say, oh, that's a loss. You know, it's it's Austin. Austin, you know, almost won the supporter shield last season, so that's a loss. Right. Orlando, we're we're going cross country. They're they're beasts in the East. That's a loss. Not, <laughs> not really. You know, these are yeah. games where you can if you get the bounces the right way, the other direction. You know, elbow handballs. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get a penalty on the uh, on the road in Orlando and you're up one zero and you run out of there with three points. Yeah. Yeah. And and it works itself out. So these these games aren't that difficult either. I I think when you look at, you know, the parity of the league and where it lands, these are winnable games. So hopefully for Cabral's son's mental health, you know, we'll get a W here soon. 
I, I was going to say Orlando could be uh, the 2017 LA Galaxy, and I would still be worried about the Galaxy yeah. traveling that far. It's like <laughs> it's you're like that's a difficult game. Also, I'd like to point out the 2017 Galaxy did win games. So as bad as they were, they beat some teams, and there's some teams yeah. right now where we're being. I can't believe we lost to the 2017 LA Galaxy. <laughs> right? Still to this day, there's some professionals who sit there and think at night, laying staring up at the up at the ceiling, right? And they're like, I can't believe we lost that game in 2017 to the Galaxy. Like that was that was a horrible game. Uh, Ezra gave a f- gave us a five dollar super chat. Says with Aouda coming in and Raheem probably getting pushed up to winger, do you think the Galaxy will go out and buy another winger before the deadline? I'm still saying yes. Um, sure. Less than three weeks, I'm still saying yes. I still don't. Give me somebody that comes off. The, it doesn't have to be a world beater, but give it's, me. It's, a, I don't think a, it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, give me somebody I, I who's think, a right, a real right winger that can back up on that right wing behind Costa. And I, now I want to see it. Um, I don't know. You're, you're, Maybe they get a backup ho- striker. I don't know. Yeah, you're, you're more hopeful than, than I am. I just yeah. think at this point in the season and where uh, if something would have been announced by now, if it was someone who was going to be a, a, a player who was going to be able to make, make an impact. I mean, yes, they still have time, but I just feel like, I, I don't know that I see, you know, a big name, a, a starting level, you know, winger coming in and saving the day. I think, you know, they're going to have to kind of make some adjustments and figure things out unless uh, unless they've been really good at keeping things under wraps. I, I just don't see, you know, a, a big impact signing. Maybe it's uh, MLS journeyman, you know, and, and maybe they need someone like that to, to come in, you know, uh, a Jeff Lorenowitz type guy who's going to come in and kind of fill in, uh, it, you know, backfill some of these positions. Maybe that's the type of guy they bring right. in, but I, I don't picture like okay we're gonna get a big name winger like we were hoping in the offseason to make things right and i think that costa staying on the team is a little bit of a, a a show of the cards that that's what's gonna happen i am i am saying that <laughs> i i know and and it's weird i i just i feel like the galaxy are in a position right now where they want to make sure that they don't have any injuries before the transfer window closes that they're going to have to replace with whatever they have because they think that they're pretty competitive with what they have, probably have depth at most of the positions that they want. There's like They still have two roster spots open, so I will tell you that right now. 20, 29 and 30 are open. Now people will freak out because those are for homegrown players. Galaxy have like five homegrown players they can yeah, throw into those an easy slots. shift. Yeah, so I'm not worried about that. That's a paperwork thing. Yeah, I, it's not a thing. Um... So I feel like there's room. Now, I also feel like Greg Vanny is keeping a an arrow in his quiver for the summer. Um, and, and that's not an international move. That's internally. And, well, it can't be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but that's internally. So it's, I just, I feel like there's still one more player to be added. Uh, I have 28. They get 30. Uh, so I feel like 29 is coming. And I feel like 30 could be coming in the summer. Or... You could get 29 and 30, and you're going to move somebody in the summer. Uh, you know, the Galaxy suddenly have three goalkeepers. Uh, you know, we haven't really got to talk about it, um, but it is it it is something that that is apparent to everybody. This is somebody they watch. This is somebody they're looking for the next best thing. If he shows up, if he performs in training, there's going to be pressure on one of the Jonathans to get traded. And you can't tell me that you couldn't trade a goalkeeper like Jonathan Bond or Jonathan Klinsman inside of the league on summer. You absolutely could. So then could you trade them and get something you need? You absolutely and, could. And, and, you know, you look at the performance from Klinsman the, this past week. He lets in a goal that was kind of questionable. You know, you just paid a million dollars for for a guy or, or something somewhere around that, uh, you know, whatever the fee was to get him. It's like, well, we, we've spent this money. We brought this guy over. You know, if, if Klingsman has a broken pinky, let's let that heal. Let's, let's put this guy in if he starts looking. So Klingsman doesn't have a long a long rope here either. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's all it's all very again, the competition is good. That's good. And I'm just now I want to see how it all plays out. Uh, and, but but yeah. the injuries are scary because that's the thing with with the international, you know, uh, window being closed in the summer. That that's the part that's scary because you have Chicharito who's coming off an injury. You have Costa who's, you know, who knows how his calves or his hamstrings, you know, day to day, how that's going to go. And then, you know, you have the injuries with the goalkeepers like if this team you know, get the injury bug starts making its way around, then there's no recovering for that because you can't really go out and, and make tons of moves. So that's where it starts to get, you know, really scary. I think we saw it happen to Portland last season. Portland right. had, you know, just people going out left and right, and they, they ended up missing out on the playoffs because they just didn't have, you know, the backfield and the depth to make it work. Right. I know what you mean. Um, what two? There's a couple different things. One is Philip gave us a $2 super chat and says, Siani's McLaren is better than Cabral's son. 
Still, I, I would Bold agree. Statement. I do I do Bold like statement. I do like uh Sianis McLaren <laughs> a lot. Um I actually knew the guy who ran that uh that Twitter account at one point. Um yeah, myself as well. Yeah. I, Jordan, Jordan Morris's dog is my I feel like he okay. he's one one level up above those two. But yeah, solid, solid shout. Um the other thing is that uh when it comes to uh Julian, uh, I've been getting pronunciation uh, checks, and and I worked on it with uh, Kevin Acevedo with the LA Galaxy whenever we were, I was there on Saturday night. Uh, so we're going with Julian, and it's uh, it's Auda, uh, D E H is the last, not not Aude, which I wanted to go with. Auda, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's like Auda, but it's it, it, yeah. So just it's ch- it's much more chill than you want it to be. Julian is where you get fun, and then it's then it's uh, it's, it's like Auda. Yeah, you're you're hitting it for you. You're like Ayuda, like help me. Ayuda, Ayuda me. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was doing. So uh, doing that. Um, so I, I'm, we're trying. There is a special SoundCloud file uh, that I got sent that actually has all the players saying their own names. A lot of fun. Good. Still need to work on Martine and really get that down because I, I, you know, I, I try. I feel like I don't do it justice, so I have to See, listen to it three or four times. But we we had this with with Ryan Revolution, uh, you know, a couple years ago. Like we he can't trust said them his name to say wrong. their own names right. He we said can't his trust name them wrong. To say their names right, so I, I I don't even trust that all the way. Can you imagine? By the way, I I totally that's not his fault. Like you go no, to a new country, you don't speak it. the language, yeah. you go there, and you're like, hey, how do you say your last name, Josh Gooseman? Like what? Oh, it's Gooseman. Yeah, just, well, it's well, on no. tape now. No, no, I, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. What? It's already gone. Where is everybody going? Why is everybody talking like that? Oh, I'm never gonna hear it back. Uh, twenty one dollar and seventy three cent super chat from executive producer Herb. Hey, Josh. Hey, Hammer. Maybe there when there's a slow moment, you guys can give a little info on how you ended up working on this podcast together. Just cur- curious, great chemistry. Listeners, viewers, hit the like button, please. Uh, executive producer Herb in the chat. Certainly appreciate that, Herb. Herb. I know, always in there. We, we've, I mean, if you've been around the podcast long enough, you know that I went on a podcast called the Guys in Shorts podcast. You guys had yep. me on there, and it was a great podcast. Uh, one of the most fun recording nights I've, I've had. Uh, yeah. I, that it's, that it, was an excuse to to drink whiskey and talk sports <laughs> with our friends here. Really, yeah. I mean, it was it was, it was more hang than than podcast, really. But you know, you, you got a lot of guys who are passionate about you know Southern California sports teams. Right, right. And so you guys would cover all the different things, and then um, so I, we were going back and forth. Uh, so whenever you had me on, it was great and it was fun. And I get, I want everybody to know, I'm not smart with things sometimes. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't pick up on things that I should be doing because I'm like in this tunnel all the time, right? Where I have all the stuff to do about the LA Galaxy. I have all the stuff I have to do for real work. And then, you know, now add in all of my like board of directors for the train club too. I have all this stuff. And so I'm always in these tunnels and I sometimes forget to like step back and take a look. One of our listeners said, hey, you should have Hammer on as a guest on the podcast. You guys like hit it off whenever you guys were on the thing. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm like, hey, yeah, hey, will you want to come on and do this? And then I think you came in and it was like, yeah, this is going to work. So yeah, uh, yeah. we're good here. Let's keep it going. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's so keep this train running. So yeah. we sort of just started doing a little bit and like we'd have you on and we'd do it. And then it was like more and more. It was like, yeah, you need to be here all the time. And I think eventually <laughs> I was like telling those guys, I'm like, I stole you away from from the yeah, guys in that, shorts. And that definitely while. turned into a thing because it was you know, more hang and less, <laughs> right. Less serious podcasts. I was like, I think I'm going to lean towards, you know, taking this a little more seriously. And then it, yeah, it was, it turned into all well, the hammer left us. So, you know, good times, but yeah, I, I feel like ever since I've joined the fold, we've meshed really well. Good. good you know, we kind of, <laughs> our, our brains go to the same place a lot, which Most time, yeah. maybe is not, not always a great not thing. Good, you, no. you need, you know, for pods, so, right. sometimes you need the back and forth. Um, but I, I think that's why why you hear what you hear is because we're we're very much the same in a lot of our our takes and 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 mannerisms and way we go about things. And we will be married in the fall. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so that's 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 sort of Drink how that came out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my. Good times. Oh, the politics around beer. I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> let's see. I wanted to get some to just one other thing, a couple little things, and then we need to continue on. Uh, Gaston Brugman leads the league, by the way, and is a game behind most people with 89 line breaking passes. Next is Michael Bradley with 68. 89. Now, of course, uh, anybody who says that will be like, "Yeah, and they didn't do anything with them." So it's like, it doesn't. Ma- hey, listen, those stats are too good not to eventually mean something. It will happen. It, it it will all come together. I I, I, say, I can tell. I can tell. I was just I saying it. we agree. We agree on everything. It me. I'm people. <laughs> I'm the one who's saying that, the, you know, you look at those passing maps and it's just very congested, congested around the middle. Like you look at some of the teams, you know, who, who are on winning streaks and you look at some of the, the way their, their passing maps look, it just, they're, they're spreading out their attacking teams with width 
and that's it's not what the Galaxy are doing. They're it's very jumbled, it's very congested, and so you're going to have a lot of you know successful passes. And I think what you're seeing from Brugman and from Puj, they've been playing great. I, they they're not having ba- a bad season, nope. and they're that's why they're showing up on these lists. But I do think that some of it is you know, going in a circle and kind of, it's not, it's not necessarily why, why you see Dayon not being successful is because that, that connection between Brugman and Puj is not making its way to Dayon. And I've kind of seen some things, you know, circling on the discord about, you know, the, the relationship between, you know, Puj and Dayon and and Brugman. It doesn't seem like it's, they're on the same wavelength. And you saw that with the celebration in Dallas, people over dissecting that, things like that. But you see it in the way, there's a reason people are thinking that is because it happens in the way it plays as well. Brugman and Puj play very well off each other, but outside of that, I don't know that they're involving uh, the rest of the team. Like maybe they, they could be, or they should be. You'll get there. Everything, everything's gonna work out. <laughs> You're hopeful. You're, I, you know, it just we're still I, early in the season. I, I haven't seen. I've seen only performances that have gotten better, and and that's why uh, most valuable defenders. Uh, after the market value update from transfer market, uh, you have one Caligari. Uh, and there, by the way, not Lucas Caligari. Caligari, he's Brazilian. He has one name. So every, you're just going to call oh. him Caligari. Yeah, I know. I, I like it. that. It's um, like Neymar, Juninho. Okay, right. I like it. Yes. Caligari. I like and it. Marcelo Sarvis. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, uh, he was. He went by Marcelo. Yeah, yeah sure he did. He went by Marcelo Sarvis. <laughs> Except Sarvis on the back of the listen, Yeah, but still. Listen, what was Marcelo? You, you should always Marcelo? worry about Brazilians. We used to play that. That was a joke. I remember whenever the Galaxy would get like Alex Alex Kazumba, right? And and they, they got him and then like always worry about Brazilians who have two names, right? If you have two <laughs> names, it's a problem. So it's Caligari um, is, is where he's at. And he's, he's valued at $5 million, right? And so there's some other guys in here. I will tell you that Walker Zimmerman is also on this as the number 10 with $3.5 million. Uh, uh, Julian Alda is also apparently Currently, um, a $3.5 million transfer market one in there. The Galaxy with Jalen Neal, with Caligari, with Alda, as, as we sort of look at it, are setting themselves up to have four or five years of superb defensive play if this all works out. And listen, Caligari looks like he plays uh, plays soccer uh he's a professional soccer he's player. a professional yeah, he, he fits player. the bill and again you're you're more hopeful than i you know if if <laughs> that transfer market chart is to be believed i don't think it's four or five years i think you know two we're lucky to get three if they if they play as well right a, a, as their build i think you know this is why i've been saying you know tank for 2024 even though you know we don't get the super draft but th- this is what it's leading towards is okay these guys really have a hopeful future and with an, a full season of mls under their belt We'll, we'll see where that takes them. The one I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth and disagree with myself. Right. Where we said this about Brugman and Puj last season. Mm-hmm. Oh, un, well, you know, once they have a full season, then they're really going to shine and really going to step things up. And while they've played well, they haven't set the league on fire uh, either. So that's just something we want to be careful with as well. There's 11 soccer Give, players on a team. Yep. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not overly. They're playing just fine. They are they're, at they're the top. Fine. I'm not saying they're they're not playing fine. I'm just saying best midfield combo in Major League Soccer. I'm just but saying. The, see, that's a bold statement. It's that's but, where you sound like a homer. It, yeah, but I, if you watch them though, like this really is Juninho and Marcelo. Now, listen, super early in this whole thing to even be saying that. I understand, but when you see the chemistry that they have and how, like you know, Brugman has this many line breaking passes. Puj has this many line breaking passes. Uh, Bruj, Brugman's best uh, best guy he plays the ball to is Puj, and Puj is a Brugman. Yeah. They are this little orbit around each other yeah. and they always They're know where one. the other one is. <laughs> they are one and that yeah. and that's where that comes from. They have a relationship that is special um and that should develop. If they put the players, if the guys around them perform, those guys will end up getting the plaudits for it. Um so uh, I'm not necessarily worried about that. Let's get to uh injury updates. Uh, Chicharito hamstring will travel with the team. Uh, he is expected to play in Houston. Greg Vanny says he's ready to go. Just working on match fitness. Uh, we have, bo- say, yeah. If, if you saw the Instagram post with his socks, his socks were almost pulled above his hamstring. So, you know, maybe that's there to keep him warm. That's know, it. I'm, you, I'm sure. Picture. I'm Good sure. Times. Uh, I, I just heard that he's, I, I, that, you know, that's a tough place to sort of be in. I always know this. We always don't, we never really talk about it that much, but the mental sort of hit of, Hey, yeah. we're starting the season and I'm all excited. And now I got injured and now I can't play. That is that's tough, and he can't train. Uh, Vanny basically said um, uh, for Chicharito uh, looking good, and now with Bond right coming in, so Bond has sort of this mental thing going on where he's out two to four weeks. Vanny said basically that he doesn't know if it's going to be two to four weeks of full on he can't train, 
total. Yeah. yeah, yeah, two to four weeks of he can't train, and then it's going to be two to more weeks after that, or if it's going to be you know three weeks, and then he's able to start training, and he's he sort of finds his way and gets back in like one week, so it's a total of four weeks. He's waiting, and he says time will tell on that. Um, you talked about Klinsman and the broken finger. That doesn't seem to be stopping him, so I expect that that uh, just Klinsman a pinky. will play. Yeah, yeah. It, it shows that the pinky's useless anyway. Yeah, you don't need it. You could cut it right off. Uh, Edwards had the ankle injury, which you talked about. He was expected to fully train today. Don't know if that happened. Expected to fully train today. Should be available, uh, and as long as there's nothing there that sort of set him back. And then uh, Sega Koulibaly, who was rumored to have uh, be, be out for the year, according to a Reddit post, uh, just has a groin hip. Um, they said time frame unknown. He was working on it and it felt better. And then they had him go do stuff and it, then it like sort of inflamed and came back. So they're working on that. Um, Greg Vanny did say growing again, whenever you said groin <laughs> and it's really, it, it's really starting to get it bothers. To, it, it, yeah. <laughs> I, I almost feel, and this is not, listen, this is not, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but it almost feels like where like somebody doesn't know what the actual word is. And like they have, like nobody ever corrected them. And yeah. I'm almost like, Greg, it's groin, Greg, groin yeah. right so just say like people me. yeah for all intensive purposes it's like no all intents and purposes yeah there, there, there's a difference there yeah for, intents and purposes yeah. yes i know um yeah. for, groin, oh, God, so i got one for you First, are we gonna make shirts is or, it, yeah we should um no i can't that's I, that's that's like that's too much it's almost like bullying and i don't want to bully yeah. i just want to educate um I, it's, it's, I do, I do picture like a little stick figure teacher pointing to groin and like with a little <laughs> circle around growing. Um, so we can show help. me where you're injured. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, oh man was, oh, uh, first come first served. It's first come first served. That's what I've always said. It should be. I also have this argument. Is it, is it whenever you're taking, say it to me, cause I swear to God, I argue, okay. this is one of those things in my head. Whenever you're you get fouled in basketball and you go to the line and you shoot a a free throw a free throw okay just checking just okay checking. is there there's trust me I see like a three for a, a three throw like there's stuff oh. in there that like you're like that's not right like who tells you that stuff <laughs> like that's not say, the way right yeah, go to an elementary school you'll see Valentine's yeah that, val- that's yeah. another popular restaurant one, yeah. is spelled yeah. incorrectly yeah I know I know those things but first come first serve. Everybody like I just want to. It's like the tense is wrong because if, but, if you're first come, you will be first served. You you will not yeah, serve. That's fair. Yes, I know. you know what? You're right. You're you're right because I say first come first serve, but you're right. It should be first come first served. Is it? Yeah, it makes. I think it's just one of those where it's close enough. It's, no, it's not that far. Off. No, Philip, don't make me say it. <laughs> I I am ignoring your two dollars super chat. This is my. I have to get on an airplane tomorrow. I refused. I want to be able to look those people in the eye when I get on the plane tomorrow. I don't want All to right. be embarrassed and in the shell. I must have. I can't see it. It says Josh. What What else does it say? Uh, I don't know. Can't say. I don't. Right. I can't read it. Right. It's It's all goofy. It's It comes in scrambled. Uh, the very good. Um, whipped cream. Whipped cream. W h i p. Whipped cream. Yeah, you're right. Okay, but you see it on like spelled. We're out of whipped cream. What, what it's whipped cream like you whip it i don't i don't understand. okay anyway no it's cream for your whip yeah that's, that's, whip. that's what there's it is a, okay yeah, there's Good. a difference glad uh so that's your your injury update there and completely sidetracked talk about how you say things <laughs> uh there is a supporters group meeting uh tonight again we don't know whether or not that has happened whether or not it's still happening um and because of that i can't really give you much info on it i did know it was happening uh, Katya uh, from ESPN Deportes talked about it yesterday and asked Greg Vanny about it and said, hey, I know there's a meeting coming up, the whole deal. And he's like, I'm not really sure where that is. It, here's I, I, I have two minds. Greg Vanny said, um, I'm not really sure where we are in the process. I've been focusing here on the field. Correct answer. But that's the correct answer for a head coach. Is that the correct answer still for a sporting director? And that's probably still the correct answer for me. You should. Yeah. Greg Vanny should not even be involved in this. He is not part of this, right? Correct. The 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 boycott is not the Vanny out boycott. It right. is it is the Klein out boycott. Give so, it another month. Yeah. So <laughs> so it's just one of those things where you're you're right uh, as a sporting director, but I think the you read kind of the for lack of a better term the list of demands and kind of the issues that they've had with Klein and Vanny is not the issue. Part of the issue is the carousel of head coaches, the carousel of GMs. That's that's the thing that they take issue with. So so you're right. Uh, it's it's not Greg Vanny's question to answer, and I don't I don't begrudge him from dodging it because every time that he's tried to give some type of answer, he ends up getting slammed by both sides because then the supporters are saying, why does he why is he saying he wants us there? Because 
he's a coach. He wants, he wants fans in the seats cheering right. on his team. Like that's, right. that's not a crazy thing for, nope. for him to want or for him to say. And then, you know, if he, if he doesn't say it, it's like, well, why is he not addressing the, bo- it's so him dodging that question. Totally fine with that. And I've kind of just the rumblings that I've heard again, it's not my, uh, you know, not my turn to speak on those things because not being part of those supporter groups, but it's my understanding that there is, you know, some type of, you know, work towards a resolution is something that's happening with, there's discussions going on behind the scenes. It's not, um, it's not all, you know, boycott all or nothing type of thing. There is, there's discussions happening yeah. to try to find some resolution to this because no one likes the situation we're in. No one, we don't want this to continue just as it, as it is because it's, it's not a great situation for all the parties involved. Well, the, the Will Koontz thing is something that's going on as well, right? And I would imagine, speculation only, I don't know this, but I imagine that Will Koontz makes an appearance at this meeting. Will Koontz was at the really stadium on didn't. Saturday. Right? It, would be, it would be weird if he didn't, right? Like, it's sort yeah. of like, this is this is one of the reasons that you, as an LA Galaxy organization, have a card to play is because you hired Will Koontz. Now, I doubt you hired him to be the third guy in the pupusa truck. Um, although we don't know what <laughs> he's his the fork, thing. he's the yeah. fork salesman. Yeah. yeah. I would say Mike Gray actually told me he was like, he's like, Hey, that was Will Koontz. And I missed it totally. But Will Koontz was at the, at the game as far, uh, as far as I know. So on Saturday, he's there. We know he's around the front office. We know things are happening with that. So, and I will say this is not totally uncommon for the LA galaxy. Remember Dennis DeClosa was at the LA galaxy facility for like a month before we actually knew what he, when he was officially announced. Right. Yeah. So, um, we don't know what is what is. I mean, this is the big question, and this is. I mean, it's ultimately you would have to imagine that Will Koontz doesn't leave a very good job as a number two in Major League Soccer to go be a number two somewhere else. Um, but we've we've been told this before. I know with with Dennis Teclosa, with with Siggy and some of the control that he was allegedly allowed to have. I know, and so there's a reason why these coaches leave and why they maybe they find other places of employment because they're told one thing and then you know, other, other things happen once they're actually in the role. So I think if people, if I think in, in my opinion, and again, it's not my call to make, I'm, I'm not speaking for anyone bringing Will Koontz on and saying, he is your soccer guy, hundred percent soccer. Right. No one is going to touch him. Right. Klein is the business guy and that's the separation. He will not, you know, you know, whatever, if they want it in writing, if they want something that was a, he is not going to touch the soccer operation. They're not allowed to in me, the same room at the same time. Yeah. They're not allowed to, yeah, <laughs> to, to wear the same color pants or, or whatever it is to me, that feels like an olive branch. Like, okay. You have addressed the situation where the, the supporters are unhappy with the way the club has been run, the performance on the field. So you are keeping him away from what happens on the field. That feels like a good enough olive, olive branch. We'll see. Now, if, if they don't want to accept it because we've been sold that bill of goods in the past, and it's not clear, then they're they're welcome to not accept that either. Right. Uh, and and we've seen all the, <laughs> I, we've said this before the before he was announced that he's still the president. There's enough of a resume that Klein has not not done a great enough job. There's enough for him not to continue on a, as president of the club without <laughs> the scandal and without the boycott and without that. So so, t- to me, it's it's you're not you're not adding anything new to it. There's already enough evidence. Uh, to kind of support his departure. Right. So if they're not going to do that, then let's offer alternative B. A B. Maybe this is a, a viable way to kind of get everyone back on track. You know what? Uh, you know what solves this whole problem? A good org chart. That's what it, that's what it's going to come down to. <laughs> I was going to say, let's get my wife on. My wife is the queen of the org charts. Oh, so she, yeah. Does she use PowerPoint for org charts? Because she does. That, yeah, yeah, of course she, she does. She yeah. can whip up a hell of a PowerPoint. I'll, I'll back her up. She's she pow- yeah, she, she's PowerPoint the real queen. deal. All right, good, yeah. good to hear. Um, but yeah, a good org chart, uh, a good PowerPoint presentation at this point, I think might might just save the season for the LA Galaxy. Uh, really interesting. Well, if we hear anything, we'll obviously continue to talk about it. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me uh, let me trip all over that. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, listen, Greg said a lot of things was really high in Costa said that he's fully bought in, um, coming from there. We gave you sort of the, the, the different updates. We told you about Julian Alda is, is headed to Houston, right? So he's going to be there. Chicharito will be there. Um, so the LA galaxy really do have, you know, a mostly complete, uh, team headed to Houston outside of probably Koulibaly and, and bond, uh, right now. So we will get there. Um, and obviously we'll get to see uh, what this game comes up to. Um, so did you talk about the Koulibaly rumor on Monday? I'm trying to remember. I didn't because I was okay. convinced it probably wasn't true and I didn't have a chance okay. to, to, sh- to, to really shut it down. And I was interested to sort of see what would happen at training. So no, but there was a rumor that somebody had talked to Sega Koulibaly and basically said that, that I was, was I'm done out for the year. Done for the year. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't seem to be the case. 
Okay. All right. So that's yeah. what we're being told. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> Again, I'm in the mood right now. I got the yeah, tinfoil hat yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say on uh, on the goalkeeper uh, Mitrovic, uh, he apparently was somebody that the LA Galaxy had been looking at for months. Um, somebody they had considered, and then they pulled the trigger. I still think they pulled the trigger whenever they knew that they had a goal, a little bit of a goalkeeper issue, especially whenever Klinsman pull, broke his. It, it, listen, they were going to bring in a number three goalkeeper. That oh, I think that always had to happen. You always have to have three goalkeepers. Yeah, um, they, and without them, you know, renewing Sanchez, I think was who they had last year. Right. You know, Lopez, they had a couple years ago. Right. That spot was available. Right, and, and so yeah, and Vanny went eventually into, it was going to come through. Yeah, and Vanny went into a dev and said, you know, there's some guys who are coming up, but that we're not. We don't think that they're they're 100 ready. So we were, were looking for another goalkeeper, and we went out and got one. He didn't say that the broken finger or, or the goalkeeper squeeze was a reason for that. I still think it probably influenced that somewhat um, to go ahead and get it done right now. Let's do it. Perfect. You get it in. Yeah. So, so just keep uh, that in mind. Yep. And I did get a question on Instagram. I'll, I'll shout it out here. It says, why did we sign an international goalkeeper and not an American free agent who would have saved us money on the international spot? To, to me, I feel like this is a use it or lose it situation with that gamut. It's $150,000. Yeah. It's so not any To money. me, it's not that big of a difference. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to spend that money anyway, or, you know, you, you're not, you know, you're not breaking the bank or going above the salary cap. So no harm, no foul, in my opinion. I agree. Um, let's see. We did that. I'm trying to think of what else he said at training that would be really interesting. There's stuff. You can go watch the full YouTube uh, recap of that uh, press conference is up on Corner of the Galaxy's YouTube channel. I think it's I also posted on the Corner of the Galaxy as well. So make sure you watch it. I'm going to try to do those as much as I can. Sometimes I don't have time to put them up, but I will try to put them out there because I think it's useful to make sure that they're... I get the full video. It's sometimes that means the LA Galaxy cut it. Um, sometimes it doesn't for the most part, they probably don't. And instead of it being in clips, I just run it from start to finish all three players. You get to see everybody who talks and then you get that, that way you understand. And I try to put them in the order they speak to. Sometimes that matters. It's weird. It's a reporter thing, but it matters sometimes yeah. because you can see the progression of questions and how it, it eventually gets to you to your third person. Well, you know, we talked to Greg and Raheem and you're like, that's why now you're talking to Tyler Boyd. It makes sense, you know, at the at the end. So yeah. uh, Memo uh, Memo Rodriguez headed back to Houston. He talked a little bit. Tyler Boyd talked. Tyler Boyd is going to be a fan favorite. I'm telling everybody right now. Tyler Boyd will be a fan favorite. Let him score a couple goals, and you're all going to yeah. fall in love with him. Uh, his Let wife, him cook. His, his wife is pregnant. Congrats to them. That's uh, that's fun. But Tyler okay. Boyd There's wants... There's a goal. There's a goal coming, for sure. Yeah, because he's got he's to do the thing. Yeah, got to get the baby goal. Um, He is so pumped to be in Los Angeles and playing for this team. You can see it when he talks. His eyes light up. Just he... he want, And sometimes it's like you, you think you're getting lip service from something. Go back and watch Tyler Boyd. He wants to be here. I, he's excited. He speaks Portuguese. He can speak to he can speak to Caligari. Caligari talked about it with Douglas, Juninho yeah. today. Yeah, and Douglas, right? They, mm -hmm. they, he's like, yeah, I can talk to Tyler. And I guess Uri also speaks some Portuguese. Yeah, because uh, they were yeah. on the same team. Yep. Yeah. There you go. So the they, Juan Pedro side. There yeah. you go. So so you can <laughs> exactly hundred percent. So as you see, like you can sort of put these things together um, and sort of see it. But he really wants to, really wants to be here um, with this. So uh, that'll be something. And then my final hot take before, and I I. I texted this in our in our group chat was uh, Douglas Costa is going to end up being the difference this year uh, well, for the LA you, Galaxy. You said it out loud. Yeah. I didn't I, think I want you to. were going to say I that to. while we were recording, but yeah, wow. I want to. I just it's just it's just remember same guy who called Charlie Rugg rookie of the year. Um, <laughs> they're like, I, who do I have to look that guy up? Yeah, you should. Um, I, I I will say from what he provided off the bench, he provided exactly what the Galaxy were missing. You know, in those first few games, it, it was the spark, it was the creativity. Like this is exactly the type of thing that they were missing, right. he provided that. So yep. can he do that for 34 games and 90 minutes game? No. But is he going to be able to make an impact on this team? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, executive producer Herb back in with the second uh, Super Chat. $6.32. I have no idea what he does, but he messes with my mind every time. I it's 11. It adds up to 11. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for always making all those introvert views available. It's frustrating. It's not easy to find. You know, it should be on Apple TV. Um. I don't see a ton of Galaxy the, content on the Apple TV thing. Is that is that fair or unfair? The, There's usually a the, game preview. There is. I, I will say that the one thing that, you know, shout out, you know, I'll give my, my Apple TV MLS season pass plug if you have it. The They always have a like a one-on-one -on -one before each game. So they'll interview a player. I haven't watched it this week, but I, I believe it was um, – uh, may have been Mark Delgado last week. They did Tyler Boyd the week before, Jalen Neal the week prior. So, you know, they do one-on-ones with the players before, which is, it's worth a watch. You kind of get a nice little feel of how the galaxy, how the kind of locker room is doing 
leading up to the game. Then you have a game preview, which is usually with um, uh, it's escaping me, K- Kaylin, Kyle, and um, yep. And we be they kind of do a okay. little you know three to five minute kind right. of game preview type thing. Yep. Uh, so so that is helpful to kind of go and kind of get your mind around where they're at. So um, the one thing that I will say is the user interface is still not all the way there. Like yeah. being able to go back and to to look at it like it's a like a TV show when you go on Netflix or even when you go on Apple TV to look at some of their shows. You want to be able to say okay, where's my MLS recap and yep. see all the weeks. Instead, it's just. You might like you'll rec- it pops up it recommends what's going to be there and you, you just hope that you keep pushing the button and it pops up so that user user interface isn't all the way there but the, there is some good content you do have to hunt for it sometimes you do need to if you want to see that galaxy stuff you need to go to the galaxy page and then it will pop up right. underneath it's not going to always be on the front page easily available so again I, I feel like there's Apple TV is underutilized right now I feel like we could be doing a lot more with it. Uh- uh, just in case everybody missed it, there was a third round draw for the U.S. Open Cup today. MLS teams entering, 18 MLS teams entered. Uh, if you want to know who the LA Galaxy are playing in that, they're not. They're in the next round, which is good news for, for everybody. That's one less game the Galaxy have to play uh, in, in the whole thing. But um, they will go into the fourth round whenever it happens. I was sort of waiting and watching to sort of see how that went. But uh, with their finish high enough up the standings, they they got that buy into the fourth round. Yeah. Where they'll I, then you enter. see the... You see the teams, the MLS teams that are in there. I think these were teams that missed the playoffs uh, last year. You have the Earthquakes, you have the Timbers, you have the Sounders. Uh, some teams, you, you know, where the Galaxy are probably going to draw one of these teams, either the West or the Pacific. You have Sacramento Republic, you have Oakland Roots, you have Monterey Bay FC, yep. you have the, the Timbers and then Orange County Orange SC, County, and yep. then the Sounders yep. and San Diego Loyal. So these yep. are going to all be familiar you know, USL names. The only one I don't recognize is Monterey Bay FC. Right. But I, I imagine San Jose m- might take care of them or who knows? It's San Jose. You never know what's going to happen with you them. Never, you never so, know what's so, going on. So we'll see. All the other teams are somewhat familiar names you've heard of. So I think uh, most likely you'll see one of those one of those teams against the Galaxy All for right. the round of 32. Very good. Well, that's sort of where we're, we're setting up. All right. We are ready for uh, for Houston. I, you know, I know we didn't talk about this beforehand. Do you have are you ready for? Uh... I'm always ready. OK, or, or, I just, I, that's a lie. I'm not always ready, but today I, gonna, I am. ready. OK, today you are ready. All right. We have the L.A. Galaxy coming up against the Houston Dynamo traveling to Shell Energy Stadium. That's on April 8th, Saturday, 530 p.m., 539 p.m. kickoff time this game on Apple TV MLS season pass. All right. Not free. I would tell you if it was free. It's not free. You have to pay for this one. Uh, but you did have two in a row, and then I believe next week might be free because uh, I think it's a uh, uh, a, a fully 100% um, uh, over-the-air and MLS uh, game with uh, LAFC. Yeah. So uh, you're going to get say, that one. Yeah. If, if you want to complain, it's behind the paywall. I can't watch MLS. This is the game where you get to complain. Yes. You don't get to complain the other weeks. No. But this week, we'll allow it. All right. Uh, and to help us get ready for that, it's the Hammer with one very special uh, dramatic game preview. Take it away, Hammer. The stars at night will be big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. Cheat Javier Chicharito Hernandez looks to make his 2023 Galaxy debut, but Houston, we have a problem. The LA Galaxy don't have any wins. Could this be the game that the Galaxy needs to get back on track? I'd be willing to go as far as banging on some trash cans or outfitting Ricky with an electrical buzzer to get a win. Speaking of cheating scandals, while the Galaxy have been in decline, maybe Douglas Costa's contributions off the bench last week is are a sign that, that points can be stolen on the road this week. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the Galaxy needs some points. It's the Galaxy versus the Dynamo. Let's get ready for liftoff. Woo! All right. Very good. I had some stumbles there. Not my best one. It's but, not, you know. I, what do you, I mean, you can't always be A+, plus, my friend. All right? It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Um, I got I got most of those references. We'll talk later yeah. about some of the ones I didn't get. You can explain them to me. Um, no wrestling ones this time. So. No, re- no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Um, whenever we look at, at sort of the, the Western Conference where Houston sits, they're in eighth place. Uh, they have six points. Uh, this is a team that has their only two wins come at home. Granted, those are two more than the LA Galaxy have. Um, ben Olsen is in charge of this team, which makes it so much more fun to watch Ben melt down on every <laughs> chance he gets. Um, there were, if you watch the San Jose um, uh, uh, Houston game, God, I feel bad for you. Uh, there were three goals in the game, all three coming on penalty kicks. Uh, if you looked at the expected goals for Houston, they didn't have really any other chances outside of the penalty kick. Uh, that was it. And I think you could probably argue that there probably should have been two more penalty kicks in that game as well. This was a, an atrocious game 
Uh, poor Adrian yeah. Healy and Kobe Jones had to call on that. And I was just like, I am, I feel bad for those guys, him? right? Um, you know, the sort of the guys. Uh, San Jose ended up winning. Uh, Houston feels a little hard done. Uh, obviously, yeah. you have guys like Dan Starrs, uh who are on Houston. I, I mean, this they is... Had him, they had him at right back, right back Dan Stairs, right according back, to the chart. Big, Although we, when you look at, you know, where he played... He played more in the center. Played yeah. more in the center, but yeah. still. Yeah. yeah, but still. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, if I've been seeing the Houston fans sort of criticism uh, of Olsen, it's that they're playing very defensively and that they're not necessarily going out and trying to score a whole bunch of goals, but they are a better team at home than they are on the road, clearly. Um, and you can sort of see that and how they fit in there. Uh, this is a Houston team that I, I don't necessarily sit there and say, okay, you know, this is, this is going to be the, the, the world beater. You have Herrera, Hector Herrera in there yeah. certainly. Uh, and he's going to be their best player. And it's, yeah, heck, yeah. I was going to say Hector, we always give you the, those players to watch for. And you're right. Hector Herrera and Arthur are, are those guys in the cinder who kind of hold it down, but I'll give you some kind of under the radar ones. Yeah. Uh, Tate Schmidt is someone who's given the galaxy fits in the past. Remember when they came Left into back. Dignity Health Sports yeah. Park and, 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 you know, put ran it, ran it up on the galaxy. He's someone who really, you know, showed out for them. And you saw where he kind of attacks where the galaxy are weak. So that's a name that I'd, I'd have you watch out for is Tate Schmidt. And then of course, right back downstairs, you know, right back center back, whatever you want to call him. You know, whenever you play against your old team, there's always that little extra heat. So uh, that's that thing you got to watch for. I mean, Bossy is the play, their leading goal scorer. He has three goals, but all three of those goals are on penalties. So, you know, those are, those are the names that you're going to be looking for. Yeah. Uh, again, this to me, and I sort of went and looked at sort of the, the season uh, takes as far as how these two teams uh, match up. Um, and whenever I look at it, I sit there and say, okay, right. so really when you look at Houston, they do like to have some possession. A little more than 50% is, is where they're at, but there's also a, not, a lot of possession that isn't there whenever you look at 52%. And I think the Galaxy will have plenty of chances to sort of take it over. The Galaxy's yeah. average possession about 60% uh, when you look at it. Shots, 17.2 to 11.4. Shots on goal, 5.2 to 4.6. So equal sort of in that offensive zone. Galaxy haven't been very uh, good at that. And block shots, 6.2 to 3.2. Galaxy have had a ton of block shots. Um, total passes, Galaxy are going to beat most teams. Um, on this 575 average passes to almost 500, uh, the Galaxy touching the ball 75 more times than Houston. Um, so I, I'm again, this is another the, the Galaxy don't go and bunker and counter, Eric. We know that. Yeah. So they're going to go out there and try to impose possession. I think you're, you're going to see a game very similar to what we saw in the season finale last season. Uh, you know, a Galaxy team that, you know, passes circles around the dynamo. And then if they can just get the finishing boots on, you know, they should be able to, you know, put two or three goals in and kind of make it work. So this is exactly the type of team that the galaxy, you know, want to play right now. You know, they're going to be able to possess, they're going to be able to go around them. It's just one of those things where, you know, on any, on any given game day, things can go wrong. You know, we know weather, I, I don't know if you have the weather pulled up, the wet, there might be some, some wetness, some, or some raininess, but Th this will given, be the you, nicest weather they ever get in Houston. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whenever they go to Houston, it's usually, you know, 112, you know, in July or in August. So right. this is actually, you know, in Dallas, they picked a good time to come to Dallas, even though that didn't work in their favor. And then they picked a good time to come to Houston. Uh, although the weather is going to be kind of funky right now. Yeah. It, it actually looks like it might be improving. So Saturday night, about 60 degrees, uh, winds about 10 miles an hour. Uh, there is still chances for, for showers. I think that go all the way into Saturday, but that seems to be improving and, and not necessarily uh, going back. Uh, you know, in the nighttime, we're just showing about 7% chance. Uh, meanwhile, on Friday, tomorrow, uh, basically, you know, a 90% chance during the day, almost 70% chance at night. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's going to be humid, but that's Houston. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, what else is new? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say absolutely uh, something there. Uh, Roman says Galaxy getting their first dub this Saturday. $5 Super Chat. Thank you for that, uh, Roman. We'll see. Uh, I do feels that way. I do feel like there is there are some things that are sort of working in the Galaxy's favor. Um, the last time the Galaxy played in Houston was a 3-1 win. Uh, the last time the LA Galaxy lost... Uh, at home to Houston was a three nothing win. The last time the LA Galaxy won in Houston before that was a three nothing. There's a lot of threes in this, so I'm definitely saying that the Galaxy are scoring three goals in this game, which is a they basically double the amount of goals they've scored all season in one game, right? Um, which, given how they like, they've just miss, been missing that final piece. There's no reason why the floodgates can't open. So. I, it's not crazy. It's not a crazy thought. It's not crazy. It feels crazy. Uh, LA Galaxy with 16 wins, Houston with 13 wins, 10 draws overall. Um, and again, the last time the LA Galaxy played in Houston was a 3-1 win. Getting two wins back-to-back -back against Houston in Houston would be something. 
Um, except that I think Ben Olsen has this team not, in, not anywhere near where they need to be yet. Um, yeah. the, I feel like they're all sort of in, in different ways. Uh, Mr. Provino asks, is there's going to be another handball controversy in this game? Absolutely. <laughs> I think Houston is averaging one penalty kick per game. Um, yeah, and this. So I think you yeah. will definitely see a penalty kick either because that's Houston's. That seems to be their mo. And after Greg Vanny's comments, he's in the ref. He's in pros ear. He's in their ear. He's, he's, he's going to get. He's, he's going to get it. one his way. And I don't know if you mentioned this uh, or if I missed it, but the, the other thing that's in the Galaxy's favor is the road team has won each of the last three meetings. So it's Ooh, just one of those things. Yeah. You know, the Gal- the Dynamo beat us at home, and now we beat them at home. So again, we're going to them. So that's a good sign as well. Five thirty eight. I'm ready. Go for it. All right. So 538. Again, this one's tighter than a J-Lo jumpsuit. We've got Houston with a 40% chance. LA Galaxy with a 34% chance. So just a six-point separation. There's only one game that is uh, tighter than that, and that's DC versus Columbus. Uh, so again, it's it's basically a pick em. You know, it, it's when you talk about the road team, uh, you know, ha- being close or being within striking dis- distance, Seattle, as well as they were playing, the Galaxy was still favored at home. Yep. So this tells you, because it's this close, that the Galaxy have a legitimate chance at, at getting some points during can, this game. By the way, can we look over at the Seattle game real quick? And they have a 70% chance to beat St. Louis yep. at home. Is 70% chance against the team that's leading the Supporter Shield? Is that... Well, it, well, we were going to see who they passed to uh, oh. on St. Louis. You oh, okay, know, which, that's right. Which, which Galaxy or which uh, Seattle defender you is going to pass it to Joao Klaus? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 538 has nailed that one. Seattle goes in there and just wipes the floor with Seattle oh, with, with St. Louis. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, oh, okay. Like, I... I forget it. I think it was Andrew Weeby who was saying what what uh, what talking points right now don't survive past like week twelve of the season. And I'm like St. Louis, St. Louis, it's yeah. St. Louis. That's not going <laughs> to well, continue. And, and I got to self report again. Yes. Uh, last week, five thirty eight was two out of fourteen with only fourteen percent. They're nailing uh, this. This week, or, five out of fourteen, thirty six percent. So a little better. bit better, a little bit better. But there were five draws, which always makes it. Makes it kind of funky. So yeah, la- last week was the week of draws. You got to yeah. throw the draws out. They can't be part of like the total because <laughs> when it draws, those are never like, it's never like a 90% chance of a draw yeah. or 70% chance of a draw. It's only like 25% chance of a draw. Yeah. You so know? we'll call that five out of nine. So yeah. better, better, better percentage yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't, <laughs> can you do that? If it draws, do you get your money back in <laughs> Vegas? Is that? Is no, that absolutely not. Okay. Just checking. But, but going to the Vegas odds last week, we, we warned you, we said, you know, Put all your money on Seattle, and right. if you did that, you, you made a lot of money last week. Right. This one, uh, again, not a financial advisor. Put it uh, on you, the Galaxy. You know, Houston Dynamo plus 145, LA Galaxy plus 180. It's not worth it. Stay away. Stay do away. Not don't, bet yeah, on this you game. Yeah, you do don't not need, bet on this game. No, no, no. They, <laughs> don't you do a, it. But, you have a problem but, if you bet on this game. Do, yeah, but, push but if, if, if you're feeling the Galaxy, if we're we're optimistic, we're making you feel it, you, you get a, you know, what, you get money. It's it's not negative. What, what's you know, that Seattle get, game? What's that Seattle game? I want to bet on Seattle. How much is Seattle? Do you have that in front of you? I don't have that in front of me. I'll have to look it up. They're probably like plus 130, 140 is my guess. And then St. Louis is going to be like plus 300. Um, <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, about right. And and then I'm gonna this, this thing. Oh, Bovada has a draw no bet option. If it draws, you don't get the bet. So see, that's what you should do. That's if you're doing that, and I don't but, suggest that. Yeah, or you could also it. bet on a draw for you know plus two forty five. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, so, so so lots you can of, bet on anything. Lots really. of fun things. Uh, you go. I went first last time. Um, I mi- I missed. I did not get it correct. Um, I was close. I had a two, I had a three one loss, so it ended up being two one. Okay. Uh, this one, I'm I'm flipping it. Guaranteed to be wrong prediction. Yes. I have the Galaxy with a two one win. All right. Chicha is back. He right. brings the positive vibes with him. This is the get right game. The Galaxy get a penalty to win the game two one. Okay. Uh, three one Galaxy. I'm, I okay. needed to keep it with threes. There's threes in there. This there's some synergy going. So actually, you know, that goes against my roulette my roulette <laughs> rules. I should, I should have it be different. So, uh, yeah, I, I say three, one, three, one, it won't be the prettiest game. Uh, but the galaxy will show some, they will actually score goals, um, which is something that they really haven't done all this yeah. season. So uh, maybe what we're it, saying is, yeah, the results need to finally match what our eyes have been showing us over the last couple of weeks. There is going to be a pretty goal. There's not been a pretty goal okay. yet this year. There will be a pretty That's goal fair. in this game. The LA galaxy score, like, you know, uh, I like it. Who's just going to hit it from the top of the box or, or uh, Brugman. Chicharita. Yeah. Brugman's going to hit. Mem- one. Oh, I like Memo Rodriguez. Memo's a banger. Ooh, yeah. Nice. On a set piece. Against, on a set against, piece. against Houston. That'd be nice. Ooh, love it. Former team. So uh, that should be fun. All right. We, you guys are very positive. Yeah. Because if we keep, you know, what are the, <laughs> again, we all know Josh's roulette rule. It keeps coming up red. It keeps, you're betting on the outside. We're not talking about inside rules. We're do- betting on the outside. If red keeps coming up, you start to look at that and go black's coming. It's, it's coming. And so then you yeah. want to put on black if it's red. So 
if the more the Galaxy lose, the higher probability in my mind that they're going to win <laughs> the next game. That's right? not how that works. It's totally the coin flip, is. It's still 50%. No. But, but I, I will say the reason why we're so optimistic. Um, the Galaxy are not getting waxed out there. We have seen a Galaxy team, you know, speaking of bad Galaxy teams, the 2017 LA Galaxy, I remember a, a game away at Atlanta where they just looked completely out of their depth. Jermaine Jones got a red card. Like that, that team got shellacked. Right. We're not seeing that. No. The, the Galaxy, the results are not there, but we're not seeing them get the get their rear ends handed to them. So I think that's why you're seeing the positivity that we have right now. Yeah. Marco nailed it, by the way. Josh is a fan of the gambler's fallacy. 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. There's patterns and everything. See, there's in a, my there's mind. There's a reason those casinos are yeah. built the way they are. Right. This was why I don't gamble. In my mind, Eric, if you flip a coin and it comes up heads four times, then the probability of it being tails the next time it's like skyrockets yeah. like and that's not the case it's still 50 50 <laughs> every time um very but they should equal out over a period of time right so there is a probability where yeah over a hundred times yeah it should yeah. eventually yeah it should be you're, 50, you're right 50. to a to an extent yes. right right so anyway that's where that's where we're at um <laughs> uh i'm trying to think i think that's it let's let's hey, call it yeah i've got i got a few instagram questions if yes. you just want to rapid fire yeah, go for it so one is, is, is Pouge regressing to the form that saw him leave Barca? No, no, we're, we're seeing him play well. It's just, it's just not clicking people who, and you know, I'm going to, I'm going to call out Christian miles. Cause he said that he didn't think Pouge had a good game against Seattle. And I disagree. I thought he had a, I thought he had a very Pougey game. He was very, <laughs> he's he, wor- he works hard. He works there, very there's hard. No, there's no doubting that. So just where it lands. So if the galaxy loses six straight, I don't think this is their six straight. It right. would be, but is the season a bust a loss? The season is not a bust. Uh, so if they lose another game, like if they lose, if they go winless in the sixth straight, I I, I think yeah, that, okay, I, I think that's where you're going, yeah. Um, no, is listen, there is a world in which the Galaxy lose to Houston, um, and beat LAFC, and there's a world in which the Galaxy <laughs> yeah. win, beat Houston, and beat LAFC. There, there's a multiverse and everything, um, that you can sort of see. This team is not bad. It is not like it is off the pace of Major League Soccer. There's no team in Major League Soccer that I would say I, that the Galaxy should be scared or frightened of at all. Um, and I don't care if it's it's LAFC coming. In. They're, it's just, they're, they're not going to be scared or frightened. It's not going to happen. Um, yeah, this team I, is good enough, so I'm not worried. I, I think because it's a road game, you can't say that it's a bust on a road. If you start stacking up your home losses, that that's cause for concern. And uh, then the last one here, yeah. very important one. Is Vanny a little teapot, short and stout? And that's based on his, his yes. photo. Uh, yeah, he was he was he got all steamed up. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That was that was one hundred percent. Yeah, to pour him out. I heard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I if if somebody could draw Greg Vanny as a teapot, uh, that might be a t shirt I have to make. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, Christian, by the way, asked for a G two report. Listen, you're not going to get mer- very many G two reports right now because that team is so young. That is, they have like I forget six academy players that are playing on that team. Just let them cook. Don't worry about anything. Let them cook. You can uh, you can go to games. By the way, they're free. Um, they're going to be at the track and field stadium again, right? So that stuff is coming up. So go enjoy. Get down there. Get autographs from the young kids because some of those kids are eventually going to make their way up, and you can say you knew them when. Enjoy that. Don't put don't put expectations on it. Don't do any of that. Just watch for development because that's what's going on right now. Um, and, and I always felt that way about G2 anyway, it was fun to go watch them play whenever they're actually like really kicking USL's butt for a little while. Um, that was when Kernan Alpha was the coach and, and doing yeah. a whole bunch of thing and Jack McBean was scoring a bazillion goals and, um, all that fun stuff. Uh, but just let this team cook. It's, yeah. it's yeah, not the, a competitive league. MLX the, next pro is not anything to get excited about. The, the players who are worth watching will present themselves yes. like the, 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 Preston Dreads will say, oh, look, look at what this guy can do. The Mauricio Cuevas is, you know, the, the, you'll start seeing the highlights of these guys, you know, making those things happen. I think uh, but, uh, Alex Alcala, he's someone who, you know, yep. was on the academy team. He's going to be on that. That's, a, you know, a name that you'll probably see floating around on highlight reels and things like that. So just look for, you know, keep keep your uh, your ears open and eyes open for some of those names. They're going to present themselves, the ones who are going to be uh, making the next step. Manchester City protege, possibly uh, headed there whenever he turns 18. Very, It'd be interesting to see if that all plays out. Again, LA Galaxy coming up, facing off against the Houston Dynamo Shell Energy Stadium in Houston, Texas, April 8th, 2023. 5.30 p.m. is your TV time. 5.39 p.m. is your kickoff time on Apple TV MLS Season Pass. 
Hammer, tell people where they can find you, and we will get on out of here. Been listening. Nope, wrong button. <laughs> you can find me at HammerEV9 on everything. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for now. That's at HammerEV and the number nine. All right, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at JGS1, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Please head on over to quarterthegalaxy.com. That's where you can find the videos, the podcast, all that fun stuff. Subscribe, like, do all those fun things. We'd really appreciate it. If you're uh, headed to the game, good luck. Be safe. Uh, stay dry if it's going to rain. Uh, and hopefully you'll see the LA Galaxy's first win of 2023 season. We'll have a game on Monday. Uh, or we'll have a show on Monday where we will go over that. And Baxter is back in the country. All right. For Mr. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening. You've been watching to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening. And we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.